traffic lights at times may seem like electronic nuisances that slow you down from getting to your destination faster, but the fact is that all people of all ages are at significant risk when traveling as no one knows what will happen on the road. Traffic lights do not only make people feel secure, but also provide safety. This is exactly why the electronics unit of the Ministry of Transport Works and Maintenance is constantly developing and continues to facilitate a traffic management system that helps in organizing the flow of traffic on our roads. We deal mostly with the traffic lights, that's our main role. We also deal with the computerized PA system in Parliament. We also deal with the pedestrian crossings, the signalized pedestrian crossings. We also set up PA systems for town hall meetings for government. It may have been a surprise to discover that it is the electronics unit of the Ministry of Transport, Works and Maintenance that manages the traffic lights around the island. Yeah, I believe they would be surprised about that because the public usually sees the police directing traffic and making the traffic announcements, as you said, and they uphold the laws of traffic. So I believe they would be surprised that MPWM actually deals with the traffic lights. When we deal with the traffic lights, we need technicians. So the, most of the police aren't technicians. They probably have a technical unit, but they need a, we need a specialized unit dealing with the traffic lights right now. The technical knowledge required to repair traffic lights is only obtained by specialized training in the electronics of traffic management signals. It's not as simple as just being an electrician. You have to have a background in electronics and computer science, basically. In terms of our unit, we actually have to train on the job because it's, it's a lengthy process. You just can't come right off the street or come with a degree and said, well, I know how to do this. It's a long process of training. Sometimes they will send us on training overseas. So we have to learn, we actually have to get more training now to learn more things in detail. So some of the training would be involved, would be overseas, some will be here actually. The traffic lights are monitored either manually by somebody visually going out to check any lights. Probably somebody from the general public will call in and say, yeah, um, we have a junction on flash or we have uh, a wireless mixed with a wired system where we could monitor the lights from inside the office as you can see in the back there. So we could tell if the lights are on flash and we could also make adjustments. We could even put them on flash ourselves. Like there was an instance where we had an earthquake a couple years ago. The traffic in town was gridlocked. This was in the evening. So we were in here and we set all the lights in town on flash so it would facilitate traffic movement. Traffic lights are very complicated mechanisms. Whenever there is a power failure or fault in the electrical grid, this may be detected in the traffic lights monitoring system, which in turn will set the lights on flash. There are times when traffic lights flash on amber at night or during the day for various reasons. When traffic lights are flashing on amber in the daytime, in most cases they are working, but at times this may mean that the lights are faulty and drivers must use the giveaway rules. Use caution though, and assume that other drivers do not know the giveaway rules. A basic giveaway rule dictates that a motorist who is turning must give way to drivers coming straight ahead. Sometimes the lights are on flash on purpose, like late at night. No one wants to go to a junction at say 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock and stop and wait for the lights to change because it's a dangerous thing. Somebody might get robbed. So we put them on flash certain times probably between 12 o'clock at night to about 6 o'clock in the morning. Some other junctions are on flash because of a fault. And usually these faults take a while to diagnose. Some of them are very easy to diagnose. So we will go to a junction, we will troubleshoot. And the good ones are when we, could, we know exactly the error that we're seeing and we could just replace a component and it works and will keep working. But then there are other junctions we will go to. We will try to diagnose the problem and it still doesn't work out and we still have to keep working on it. And it's a long process because it might work but then in the next five minutes when we leave there, it goes back into flash. So it's a difficult process. 
well, traffic lights and pedestrian crossings are there for safety. So, for instance, if there was a number of accidents at a junction, like for a cross junction, the government would just decide, you know what, there's too many accidents here, so we'll put either around the boat or traffic lights here. But in my opinion, traffic lights are much safer than roundabouts. And then in terms of the pedestrian crossings, sometimes head teachers from schools will call us, our parents, and they would request that we put up a flashing beacon or traffic lights in front of their school, traffic crossing, so it's safer for the children. And sometimes residents in residential areas will call and say, well, there are a couple of accidents with people getting struck by vehicles trying to cross the road, like at Spring Garden. So we will put up a cross in there also. The range of traffic signals, lights and beacons are quite costly to obtain. If you have a solar crossing at some of the, some of the schools of Luther Thorne, that can range from, that, can, that start at between ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000, Beijing, Barbies dollars. A simple crossing, signalized crossing, with the white amber green stop. And they will start at 60,000 Barbados dollars. But, and one of, our, one of our most expensive intersections at Heinz Hill, that is around 200,000 Barbados dollars. But we have not yet included the world's equipment if, if we were to add it to the system. It, 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 it will probably carry that, increase the price to about another 15000 US dollars or $20,000 because the, that, the world's equipment is very expensive. Traffic lights become damaged on occasion, and when this happens, the length of time that it may take to replace them depends on certain factors. A few times we had to do the excavations where the boats that, that is holding the, the base in place got damaged or broken or, or, or they're too rusty to be brought back. So we will have to probably do some, exc some excavation work, dig those out, which probably can take about a week to, um, to um, have everything placed back. So uh, it can range from two days probably to about a week. So the signal housings are either polycarbonate, which is like a plastic, or it could either be an aluminum composite. The aluminum composites will be heavier, but they're more sturdy. And the poles and the pole bases are also made of aluminum. If not damaged, traffic lights may last for over a decade. The polycarbonate signals, you know, that's the white amber green, the housings for that, for um, the white amber green signals, right? We can, you can get comfortably 15 years out of one, one, one of those be, before they start to crumble, cause they're after with age, they start to crumble, right? And poles can be there indefinitely on, unless they are knocked down. Um, but the cabling, sometimes the cabling get a little old, sometimes they, they, um, if they are exposed to light, they can, um, like, they're kind of biodegradable, shall we say, once they're exposed to the elements, they start to crumble. We get our trap lights from a company named AMB Electronics in the Bahamas and they're the middleman between us and the Econolite in the USA. So Econolite is one of the leading traffic light manufacturers in the world. The unit hardware has evolved from the days of motor-driven dials and camshaft switching to the adaptation of general-use microprocessors for a wide variety of intersections and special control applications. The functionality and characteristics of a modern signal controller are determined by software more than hardware. The same physical controller may operate quite differently when loaded with a different software package. It has been said that the humble traffic light will be gaining some new responsibilities in the future, including the active management of traffic congestion. With new technologies emerging, it is necessary to keep abreast of new trends in the management of traffic lights. With the new technologies within traffic lights, as with anything else, we have to keep upgrading our system because we don't want to be left behind. When I first came here, we didn't have this system, so it was much more difficult back then. We would have to physically go to all the junctions and check well and, and if we had to set certain time of day programs where 
we can have certain phases or certain movements of traffic moving at different lengths of time during the day. We could do that from in here now. So it's much easier. With the advancement of technologically developed countries, there is now an increasing move to develop and implement smart traffic lights on the roads. These are systems that adapt to information that is received from a central computer about the position speed and direction of vehicles. They try to communicate with cars to alert drivers of impending light changes and reduce motorist wait time considerably. Trials are being conducted for the implementation of these advanced traffic lights, but there are still many hurdles that need to be addressed before widespread use. One of these hurdles is the fact that few cars are yet to be equipped with the required systems to communicate with such lights. The smart traffic lights system is currently being tested in Ingolstadt, Germany. The electronic technology is dynamic. It's, the technology keeps changing and changing and changing. A, a piece of equipment that you, that you may have to do another two or, two or three years from now, it may be obsolete. But the basic working system of the traffic lights remains the same. Well, we are pretty advanced at the moment, but we can get better. The most advanced equipment we have right now are the cameras that would detect when a car is present. Right now, we are not using cameras to full capability, but we will soon be using them to full capability. Um, we're also planning to do a wireless system throughout the whole island so we could control all the junctions from inside of our office. The electronics unit of the Ministry of Transport, Works and Maintenance has already begun the process of moving away from inductive loop detection of traffic to video detection. Here is the difference between the two. The inductive loop traffic detector can detect vehicles passing. An insulated electrically conducting loop is embedded into the road. When a vehicle passes over the loop or stops within the loop, a pulse is sent as a signal to the controller signifying the passage or presence of a vehicle. Video detection and broadband communications technologies, on the other hand, continue to help generate new levels of intelligent transportation systems or ITS capabilities. Whether for surveillance, vehicle detection, data collection, or traffic monitoring systems, video detection and broadband communications are increasing. The ITS performance cost efficiencies and access to strategic traffic information help transportation professionals to improve safety, reduce vehicle emissions, and mitigate traffic congestion. The next step for the electronics unit of the Ministry of transport works and maintenance is to be completely wireless in terms of communication between the technical operating center and the 28 traffic light junctions and eight pedestrian crossings throughout Barbados.